Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's episode, I want to share with you the truth about candlestick patterns, right, that you might not be aware of. So there are a few things that I want to cover. Number one, the gap element about candlestick pattern. So traditionally, right, if you study, let's say, the bullish engulfing pattern, by right, this pattern, right, it has to uh, gap lower than the previous day low and then close, right, above the previous day high. So that's where the bullish engulfing pattern actually engulfs or cover the previous day uh, range. This is fine, right, if you trade the stock markets because the, the, the markets can, you know, get up and down, right, pretty often. But when you take this, right, and trade the Forex market, like the one hour time frame on the Forex market, you realize that there's not many gaps on the chart. So does it mean that, you know, bullish engulfing pattern cannot be applied to the Forex market? No. You have to then use candlestick patterns, right, and tweak it in such a way that it's meant for the Forex market. And one simple way to do it is that just uh, those candlestick patterns that require gap, right, for the forex market, right, just ignore the gap portion of it. So, for example, again, back to the bullish engulfing pattern. So, if you trade the forex market, you rarely get a gap, right, below the previous day or the previous candle low. So, in this case, right, as long as the bullish engulfing pattern, as long as the pattern, right, covers, right, or engulfs, right, the previous candle, the body of the previous candle, that to me is a bullish engulfing pattern. So, you have to take this into consideration, especially the gap element, right, in trading when you are applying it to the forex market. Number two. Candlestick patterns, right? It doesn't tell you how the price moves. Yes, a bullish candle, right, tells you that the price has, you know, closed above the opening price. That's why it's bullish. That's why it's green color. But it doesn't tell you exactly how did the price move from the open to the close. Could it be it goes up just from open to the close, one straight line? Or it went up, went down, and then went up again? Or maybe it went up, retraced 50%, and then went up again? Or maybe it went up and starts consolidating near the highs? You, you have no idea, right, how the price moved from the open to the close. That's one thing that candlestick patterns won't tell you. So you have to, you know, kind of be aware of this limitation. So for example, if you want to know whether is the price likely to break above previous day high, just by looking at a green candle, it, it won't tell you much of an information because you can't see, right, on a micro analysis, on a on a on a um, minute details, right, how the price actually moved from the open to the close. So this is kind of like uh, another limitation of candlestick patterns that you want to be aware of. Eh? Of course, it's easy to overcome this limitation. Just go down to a lower time frame. And you can see it. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is to, to kind of like, you know, share with you the truth, right? About how candlestick patterns uh, work. Number three, candlestick patterns, right? They are not the only way to, to read a chart. So, so especially new traders, you might be surprised. Because, but you know, there's other ways to read the chart. Yes, you can use things like, you know, line chart, bar chart, etc. And for stock traders, right? I've seen you know, some uh, prominent professional stock traders. They just use bar chart. They don't even want to get involved with candlestick charts, candlestick patterns. And the reason is simple because bar chart, pretty much provides uh, similar information to what candlestick patterns provide. And maybe it's kind of like less, less uh, overwhelming because there's, there is no color to it. It's just you can see the range of the candles, the volatility, contraction patterns, and that's it. So again, right, just to share, candlestick patterns, candlestick charts, they are not the only way to read or visualize a chart. There are many other ways to do so. Number four, candlestick patterns, right, they are very useful, right, to me personally as a entry trigger, as a, as a trigger to get into a trade. They are not right meant to be uh, used in isolation. So this means, for example, if you spot a hammer, if you spot a shooting star, it doesn't mean you enter the trade immediately. Some, some traders I know, if they spot a hammer, oh, right now it's a bullish hammer, it's time to buy. No. Candlestick patterns, they are not a trading strategy. They are just simply right a tool right to help you get into a trade provided all the other market conditions are met. So don't use candlestick patterns in isolation. They are in my opinion, right, most useful, right, to serve as an entry trigger to tell you when exactly to enter a trade. When all other market conditions are met. For example, you know, if you are trading in an uptrend, the price comes into an area of support, an area of value, or you have some fundamental reason, right, that you think this market is about to go up higher, then candlestick patterns are, are useful, right, to tell you when exactly to enter a trade. So useful as an entry trigger. That's number four. And finally, number five, candlestick patterns. I'm, I'm not sure if you have studied those textbooks courses and stuff like that is that there are a lot of patterns out there. A lot. Hundreds, right? I won't be surprised. So, you know, shooting star, hammer, bullish engulfing, piercing, dark cloud cover, harami, doji. That's just a fraction of what I've just covered. And the key thing that I want to share is that don't try to memorize all these different patterns out there. You will burn yourself out. And in fact, you, there's no need to memorize all these patterns, right? I'm just going to share with you two things, right? To, to pay attention to and I can guarantee you that you don't have to memorize any other candlestick patterns ever again. Sounds good. First thing first is this, number one. You want to ask yourself, right, where did the 
price close relative to the range. So you know, a candlestick pattern has the open high, low and close. So where did the price close relative to the range? Because if the candle closed near the highs of the range, it's telling you that this is a, a bullish sign, right? The buyers are temporarily in control. And if the price closes in the lower end of the range, it's telling you that the, the, the sellers, they are temporarily in control. That's why the price has closed near the lows of the range. And if the candle closes in the middle of the range, then it's pretty much undecided. Buyers and sellers, they are pretty much you know, in equilibrium. Right? So that's the first thing, right? Where did the price close relative to the range? The second thing that you want to pay attention to is, the, is this. What's the size of the candlestick pattern right, relative to the earlier candles? So for example, if you, if you see one huge bullish, bullish engulfing pattern in just form, right, and you realize that you know, compared to the last five candles, this candle is like so much larger, it's like two times larger, then this tells you that there is likely conviction behind the move. Right? It's a huge candle right, that has you know, kind of like overpowered, overwrestled right, the earlier candles right, in, in terms of the strength of the move. So that's the second thing that you want to pay attention to. What's the size of the candlestick pattern relative to the earlier candles? Because if the size is, let's say, of similar size or even smaller than, smaller than the earlier candles, then it's telling you that you know, this candle is pretty much insignificant because it's telling you that volatility in this market is contracting, right? This candle is quite insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so quick recap to what we have this, uh, just, this, just discussed today. Number one, when you use candlestick patterns, right, you must take into consideration the, the gap portion right, when you're trading the forex market. Number two, candlestick pattern, it doesn't tell you how the price has moved. It just simply tells you, you know, uh, uh, from the open to the close, right, where they close higher, lower, or around the same level. Number three, candlestick patterns or candlestick charts are not the only way to visualize or read the chart. You still have bar chart, line chart, etc. Number four, uh, candlestick patterns are useful, right, as an entry trigger to get into a trade, but you shouldn't use these patterns, right, in isolation, meaning you don't see a shooting star and sell the market. No, don't do that. And finally, number five, you don't have to memorize every single candlestick patterns out there, right? The two things to pay attention to is, you know, where did the price close relative to the range and what's the, the uh, size of the candlestick pattern, right? Relative to the earlier candles. Okay, so with that said, I wish you good luck and good trading. I will talk to you soon.